A fire broke out aboard a ship loaded with vehicles. And while the flames might be out, the danger isn't over. There is still a significant chance of reignition, and even though this happened in a port, the incident is far from over. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter and automotive engineer researching EV batteries since 2018. This all happened yesterday. A fire erupted on the third deck of the Delphine, a massive 760-foot roll-on, roll-off vessel. It's meant to transport cars. Thankfully, it was docked in the port of Zeebrugge at the time, and that's located in Belgium. But the deck that caught on fire was packed with about 190 vehicles, 60 of them being electric vehicles. As the fire grew, the ship's automated CO2 system kicked in, which is standard in the maritime world. When that system activates the affected deck, it's sealed off to limit oxygen. And in most cases, that's enough to stop the fire. But lithium ion batteries don't play by those rules. They don't need oxygen from the atmosphere to burn. They'll go into thermal runaway just fine without it. And the real danger here is the gases they release, because as you already know, if you've been following me for a long time, those gases are flammable. Now, because you've sealed off that deck, you've created a space where flammable vapors can build up. Best case scenario, you get a small vapor cloud explosion near the failing vehicle itself, the electric vehicle, of course. But the worst case scenario, that gas builds up inside and causes a major blast that damages the ship itself. When EVs are involved, ventilation is key, and that's completely counterintuitive to what we're traditionally taught in firefighting. Usually when we want to confine that fire, we want to limit the flow of oxygen to that area. Thankfully, all 26 crew were safely evacuated, except for the captain who stayed to coordinate with the responding fire crews. Four tugs with firefighting capabilities hit the hull with water to cool the side of that ship. But crews on shore faced a serious challenge. How do you attack a fire in an enclosed space? Full of vehicles that are packed side by side, end to end. Very little space around them. A deck where there's really no safe way to vent it or access the fire zone. This is extremely dangerous. Let's talk about how these vehicles are transported. Inside a row row ship, cars are parked extremely close together bumper to bumper, with barely enough room to squeeze between them. Barely enough room for the person driving that vehicle onto the vessel to get out of that vehicle. Each car is secured with nylon straps, and there's virtually no room for traditional firefighting tactics. No way to get a hose line between vehicles. No room to move a burning car away from the other vehicles. You're in a steel box, and when one car fails, especially an electric vehicle, it can easily cascade from vehicle to vehicle. That's exactly what firefighters are dealing with aboard the Delphine. Even with that fire knocked down due to the CO2 system, temperatures inside that compartment are still hovering right around 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 to 80 degrees Celsius. Visibility would be near zero, and any fresh air entering that space, that would risk reigniting all those unburned plastics and foams and residual materials still inside the vehicles, anything that hasn't burned yet. To avoid that, they kept the deck sealed and brought in nitrogen to flood the space to hopefully maintain an inert environment. Hopefully they're also sampling the gases inside because if the hydrogen levels, and yes, electric vehicles release hydrogen, CO gas, other hydrocarbons, very flammable gases, they've got to make sure that those levels aren't creeping towards the lower explosive limits. It doesn't take much to set things off again if that happens, and you could have a catastrophic deconstruction of that vessel. This is where the standards come into play, or lack of standards, I should say. If you're shipping an internal combustion engine vehicle, an ICE vehicle, they're required to be shipped with less than a quarter tank of fuel, and their 12-volt batteries are going to be disconnected. But with electric vehicles, things get tricky. There's no global shipping standard for EVs to reduce that fire risk. You can't actually disconnect the high voltage battery. At best, you can pull the service disconnect, the low voltage disconnect, or high voltage disconnect depending on the vehicle itself. But there's still a massive amount of energy stored inside that battery. And unlike an ICE vehicle, an internal combustion engine vehicle, you don't want to disconnect that 12 volt battery. Because if you disconnect the 12 volt battery on an electric vehicle, you're now disabling the battery management system and the thermal management system. You actually want those systems alive to monitor and cool that battery during transport. A good recommendation is to ship an electric vehicle at less than 30% state of charge. But is that actually happening? 
especially for used vehicles. It's really easy for those vehicles to arrive at the port fully charged. And if it is a used vehicle, does it have prior damage? Maybe from a crash or water intrusion, or maybe just poorly maintained. If that's the case, you now have a very real risk of thermal runaway, sitting in an enclosed steel box with dozens of other vehicles nearby. This isn't hypothetical. Recently in Miami, the port of Miami, a shipping container packed with four flood damaged EVs from the hurricane, it exploded, sending large pieces of that container flying and completely destroying it, as well as the four vehicles inside. Based on the final report that I have right here, it did end up being caused by a Tesla Model S, a 2021 Tesla Model S that had failed due to flood damage. In Newark, New Jersey, a fire aboard a Roro ship killed two firefighters a few years ago. The NTSB just released a report on this, and while that incident didn't involve electric vehicles, it highlighted the same core issues. Tightly packed vehicles, confined spaces, limited ventilation, but the most important takeaway? Training. Firefighters are trained to fight fires in buildings, not ships, and ships are a completely different beast. Different layouts, different risks, and a whole different playbook. That gap in training can be deadly, and in this case, it was. This isn't an anti-EV message. It's a call for smarter standards. When electric vehicles catch on fire, the consequences are different and potentially much more severe in enclosed environments like ships. We need proper protocols for state of charge, damage screenings, and detection and suppression systems tailored for lithium ion battery hazards. This time, they were lucky. The next fire might not happen in a port. It might happen when that vessel's out at sea.